Now, Mike Gaffney just tried to call me. I'm going to call him back. I don't know what the difficulty is. Yo. Yo, yeah, when you called, oh, my uh, yeah. my mouse, uh, like, battery ran out, so I couldn't even answer. <laughs> I had to uh, okay. run the other room and get a battery. It's been uh, warning me for days. Like, uh, we're, we're running low. You should change battery now. You're like, nah. And I'm like, da. <laughs> <laughs> and then right when you're calling, I get a click and dead. <laughs> and it's like you don't look at in the mouse like don't look at me. Don't like, yeah, look I, at me. I, yeah, I've been giving you all the warning. Uh, <laughs> and that's that. So what's up, bro? Home today? You know work at all? Nope, home today, uh doing some video editing for some other shit. And uh <laughs> I, I was supposed to go. I, I keep hearing myself repeat in your uh, thing. Got to get you a set of headphones, bro. No, but it, it won't work. <clears throat> no? If I put maybe if I put headphones into this microphone. Yeah, into the. That's what I do. My headphones are in my microphone. All right, let me say. Ah, oh, fuck. Of course, of course, of course. My shitbag fucking children. Hold up. Okay. I don't mean that, Sam. Sorry. He says shitbag with all the love a dad could. <laughs> with all the love. See, Mike's leaving me now with no warning like I usually give. Um, so he's now in his uh, his home looking for headphones, and now he's back. See? Was that hard to do? You gave me shit about that on the cast last time. Was that hard to do? I tried it. I've not been paying attention for you for the past few seconds, so. I know. I know. But I'm just saying, I continue to podcast without any. Uh, yeah. Hullabaloo. Just, yeah. You didn't say. I didn't say to you, hey, talk. Oh, so you just want me to leave next just time? Just leave, bitch. Uh, I'll, I'll just I'll leave. see it happen. All right. I don't need to let the people now know that I'm talking to myself. Okay, so what you were against was the warning that it'll be just you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, that way you could pretend that you're that you're still to there, me. right? So you just keep carrying on as if I'm listening, right? And then when I come back, I'll just go, uh huh. I right, see. Right now, you're talking. I'm talking. Talk. Uh, hello. Do you got me? No. See, what happens is I got to take. Let me set. I got another idea. Okay. Because plugged so, into the, plugging them into the microphone. Makes it go, makes the microphone volume go to me. Yeah, it's supposed to. But you still come out of computer. Oh, you got to set your computer output to the microphone. Oh, go, go to your settings, set output to microphone to your. Uh, to so your, don't plug this into the computer. No, and... plug that into the microphone. All right, would that work though if I plugged it into the computer? You probably get some sort of uh, weird, um, like, uh, like, like, like echoey. Echoey, second. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So plug that into the mic. Okay. Go to settings. Settings and then input. Sound output. Okay. To whatever your mic is. See, for the, for the fan that had posted that she enjoys our technical difficulty fixes, uh, this one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to walk Mike through some. Uh, All right. Let's see how that. Let's see how well, that goes. Now? Talk. I'm talking right now. You, you, no. you, the input should be your mic, and the output should be your mic. Let's see. Input. Input is the mic. It's okay. the USB. Then go to output. And output says a U2N, which is what this is. Yeah, that's that. Yep, do that. And I hit that. And I put the mic, put the headphones on. Okay, but I still hear you. Uh, did you click X out of that or no? Do you hear me through your headphones now? Yeah, but but I also hear you through the, through the speaker, which is the problem you have. Okay, go into your Skype settings. Go to Skype where it says Skype up in the top corner. I have it in the top, the middle. Go to Skype preferences. Oh, okay, gotcha. Skype. And, and then, um, where it says speakers. Okay. And ringing, select your, your uh, microphone. Where it says speakers. It says, it should say, where it says audio, audio video. Audio video, okay. I. Go to ringing. Okay. 
Both, both say the microphone. Okay, then. Well, you know what? Then let's just forget about it. Because <laughs> when I do this, go ahead. I don't hear me no more. That's the difference. You don't? No. Okay. Do you, but you hear me better? I hear you the same, but oh. now I hear my annoyingness, which is irking me. Ah, uh, okay. So this does. So right now you're not hearing that comeback. No. Then I don't give a fuck about hearing these. Then maybe the plug in. Yeah. All right. Whatever. That's what I'm I was worried about. Through. Every time I said something, I was hearing it again. Because it gets the speaker was going through the mic and coming back at you. Bada bing, bada boom. But now it's not doing that. It's However, I don't want to hear my loud mouth into my head. Yeah. Um, so here we so are. That's that. That's and that's that, and nothing you can do about it. Yeah. I canceled the internet radio appearance I was supposed to go on tonight. Uh, that doesn't even that doesn't even sound like a thing. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it was down. It, it was it was down in uh, <clears throat> Lambertville. It was like this. It was it's kind of like a like a real time with Bill Maher. They have two comedians and two local politicians. Okay, that sounds interesting. Politics, and I said, "Yeah, I'll go." And then uh, it came up where Kerry's my wife's got to stay at work late, so I got to take Justin to the allergist. Okay. And if this was a paid gig, I would go around and ask if they can take Justin to the hour just for yeah, me, yeah. but for a free radio spot an hour and an hour away. Right, right. I was like, I got to reschedule. Yeah, yeah. Because my wife's not even feeling well. She's working not feeling well. I'm like, I don't want to put it on her. To have to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Like normal if I was like, hey, honey, this is like a spot in the city yeah, the club yeah. I'm trying to get into. She'd be like, all right. Right, right. But. Like, honey, can I go talk to 14 people over the internet airwaves? <laughs> try and get f- two listeners from my podcast out of it. She'd be like, no, if if, if you have to, but I don't like you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be back in July. I think we rescheduled for July. Oh, good. All right, so, good. And that's that. But I always feel guilty bailing on people. Right. Um, but uh, I got over it like about a half hour later, so I'm getting better at that. <laughs> <laughs> I used to hold on to that shit all day. Right. Like, like oh, I can't believe I did that, but I think I'm getting more numb to life. Right, right. And I'm like, well, it's not like anyone's dying. Yeah. Yeah. You can look at the big picture and be like, ah, come on. I mean, come on. That's like, you know, like if you told me today, Joe, we can't record, I'd be like, okay. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? These these hundred people are just going to have to live without it for another day. <laughs> if they're even listening. I, I was thinking about that. I'm like, I see the downloads, but I'm like, I wonder like, if people are just auto, if it's automatic downloaded. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's been – I've known that. I felt – knew that since when you said we have a hundred – whenever we usually have downloads, I'm like, well, how many people are actually clicking on it who are just subscribed to it? And that's all. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, I would like them to listen to it. And maybe once in a while, they're like, oh, let me listen to one of these episodes. Who knows? Right. It's the way I was subscribing to Mark Marin, and I didn't listen to any of them. And then once in a while, I'll go in and go, oh, let me listen to this one. Exactly. Exactly. Got some listeners in France. Nice. I could tell you the, the, the areas where we have listeners. You, oh, you got that? Like I got it down. That, they, they, they tell you the numbers per state. Is this Google Analytics? No, nah, this is this is our podcasting our service. Lip- Libsyn. Libsyn. If we go to uh, our show, our geographic map, got a uh, seventy-one people listening in China. Uh, okay. fifty-six people li- listening in other. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't know who you are, other but now listen, no we got stand-up. we got two in Costa Rica. Now, the two in Costa Rica, I did know people that went to vacation in Costa Rica, so I'm assuming they were listening while by the pool. Maybe. Which, now that's a fan. Yeah. I ain't listening to shit. I don't want to hear me on vacation. That that had to be a rainy day that day. That's how come I'm taking a vacation to get away from me. Yeah. Two in the UK. Nice. Two in Vietnam. Okay. That's two POWs. We got three people (laughs) listening in Turkey. The two POWs. These are military three, people, people, baby. Radio. What? Gotta be military people. Yes. Um. Yeah. More eight of other regions, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Ten people in France. All right. Thirteen in Slovakia. <laughs> All right. Why you don't? Why you don't no, think I, you have Slovakian I, fans? You gotta let me talk. All right. I don't really believe these numbers anymore. Why? Throwing out these countries. 14 in Canada. 
I'll, 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 buy that, I'll, I'll buy that one. 71 in China. I don't buy that one. Why? China's got a big American population, you know? Okay, Ex- maybe that's what they're Expatriates, that you know what I mean? That's probably what it is. And 829 in the United States. I was. If, if you said 829 and you were going to say in Chechnya, I would have had a hard time. No, one in South Africa and one in El Salvador. South Africa, I have fans. So that, that, that person I know. Fan, uh, fan. There's only one. Yeah. You have fan in South Africa. Fan. And he's listening. She. She. And her husband. Okay. Yeah. Now you want now want to delve into the U.S.? No, what, break it down? Break it down? No, no. no uh, the, the listeners don't want that. But I'm just saying, we're yeah. getting listeners. We're get, yeah, we're getting with listeners. Rel, with not even relatively no advertising. No advertising. Because... <laughs> <laughs> There's there's people who like do little advertising and we're below those people. And even when I upload a, a an episode and tag you, that's the last time people see it in their news feed. We don't even post the third in the week, me and you. No, we don't even read. You know why? Remote. You know why? why? You know why? Because when it shows how many people saw that, the the disappointment that flutters over my body two days after I post it on like my my page, four people viewed this. It makes me go, oh, I'm gonna. Re- Repost that for four your, more. Your regular page shows you views. No, my my fan page. Oh, we can't go by fan page because that's pay, or you're not. They're not seeing it. No, I know. That's the way they work. They're like, go. I saw his regular page though. Yeah, regular regular page. Regular page. If you share a link, no one view. When it's just look at how many times you share a link, you get three likes, four likes. We have eight hundred people in the states who like us, and they never like the link. Because they don't see it. Facebook hides it because it's the link. I know. I was thinking about that yesterday. Just a bitch again about the Facebook fucking algorithm. It's like, you'll post you're going to be wherever. Uh-huh. And you'll get, I don't know, anywhere between 20 to 30 likes. Yeah. You post that your daughter gave you a happy Mother's Day card. It's like That's 700 li- or whatever no. it was. Yeah. <laughs> so it's either this. Either it's the algorithm or people are like, you know what, Mike? Fuck your shows. I'm only liking when... <laughs> you do something with your children. Yeah. Well, I, it's – but I even like regular jokes, I'll put like a joke up and that gets a lot of – it'll get a lot more attention than, hey, I'm going to be at Scotty's. Yeah. But not as much as something about your kid. No. not No. You know what happens? The way the algorithm works, if I put a picture of my kid, me, me, me with a, a, thing, a caption with my child, people read it and then that shows up in their news feeds and then someone says, oh, Gaffney put a picture and it just gets – Fluttered. If I put up, I'm going to be in, hey, yo, New York, I'm going to be in, you know, Springfield, some person like, nah, and I even fucking acknowledge that existence. Yeah. They're not going to my show. So less people are looking at that. So it shows up less. Right. True. You know? Yeah. But as far as links are concerned, like, Facebook is going to bury anything with a link. They suck. Yeah. I got to figure and out like, a way to promote this goddamn shit. And like, even like, no, Facebook kind of owns, um, what is it? Are you Snapchatting? I'm just taking a picture for Snapchat. Keep talking. I'm, I'm trying saying, to promote. Hey, uh, I can, I just would like to know. Give me a heads up. I'll Snapchat too. I have, I also use it. Yeah, but my room's dirty behind me. I don't want people to see that. <laughs> I didn't make my bed. So I can show people who you are. My wife will kill me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fine. Like the one time, I was just talk- I was just skyping with you. She came in the room. She goes, "Oh my god, you're letting Mike see the room like this? I'm like it's fucking Gaffney. What the fuck does he care? <laughs> he doesn't. She's like he he doesn't. I do. I'm like yeah. I'm just tell Carrie. There's a reason why we have this one angle from my room at all times in every video. That I ever do. What is it? Because the rest of the room will never be, I will never visually let anybody see the rest of this fucking place. <laughs> Imagine you turn the camera around, it's like fucking whips and chains and like S&M gear. Somebody, somebody tied to the wall with a ball gag. Big sex swing. <laughs> it's Mike Gaffney's sexual torture chamber. <laughs> but behind him, it's his, like his CD, his children's pictures, <laughs> little desk like he's working. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you get an inch away, it's like... Like an opium den. <laughs> it's an opium den. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Snapchat. I tried promoting it on Snapchat, the podcast. I'm trying to get more 
Snapchat followers. But like when I put a video to Instagram, and I know Facebook owns Instagram, when it goes when a video goes from from Instagram to Facebook, it gets very little love. But if I, oh, a video, a picture does lots a of love, does. but video, yes. no love. Video gets very little love unless it's got a corgi in it. But if I put up, if I put it up to uh, fr- like through Facebook instead yeah. of like you know. If I download it to my phone and upload it onto Facebook, uh, that's the most love. That's going to get the most love I'm going to get from that. And sometimes you'll see 300 views. You yeah, know what I mean, it's like 300 views of a video I did of me driving. It's not a lot of views. So, but I want to do is make a clip of the show, make a clip, even if it's an audio clip, give it to me as um, you know. And then I'll have it on my phone. And I can upload that to Facebook or on my computer, upload that directly yeah. to Facebook. And it'll be like a little video saying, hey, check out our new episode. And we can just say, check out our new episode in every one of the clips. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same, like, check out our new episodes up this week. And then click the link. Yeah. I mean, I click think the, the link in, yeah. the, in the comment section. In the video, we'll get a little more play. Yeah, hopefully. We got to find a way. Got to find a way. Yeah. It's just... Uh... It's yeah. it's not easy. It's not easy because, quite frankly, if our only reach is Facebook, if that's where we're going to try to get it all, we ain't going to do it. You you got to be out there. Yeah, I we got to we got to get a. We should take a picture and then get you know make a flyer and get it printed. Next next Sunday, are you at the studio? I think so. Um, I'll have to look at my schedule, but uh, I I think I am. I think. I want to. I'm going to try and work on that app this week. Try and get that because I feel like if we get one of those QR codes, maybe on the thing where people can like scan it. Right. People even do that shit still. And you know what would be right funny? The app photo all in our heads, just me and you laying like head to head on a cou- or, like a therapy couch with a person sitting bet- between us. Like you know what I mean? Your head here, my head here, our bodies on couches, and yeah. someone sitting between us, like a, like a doctor trying to. Figure out all in our heads. That could that could work. We could try and set that up. I think that's a funny, yeah, visual. That's a good because right, you know, right now our logo is just the text, but it'd be good to have like a logo with our faces to get yeah, yeah. more uh, branding and facial recognition, right? And shit. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we figured out how to when we do have the app, it's just going to be in our heads. In our heads, and that's twelve characters with spaces. With so spaces, does that work for with spaces? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many is that with spaces? Twelve. Count them. It's twelve on the nose. On the nose. Okay, in our heads. Yes. Okay. All right. We'll do that. Nice. Hey, Slovakia, come on, get more listeners for us. <laughs> you Slovakians, or or American soldiers out there in Slovakia protecting I- us. I, I might, I be, but I, it might be regular Slovakians and a lot of Slovakians in my area, in the Garfield area, they work at Dunkin' Donuts. Maybe you're a Slovakian that met me at Dunks, became a fan, went back to Slovakia. Yeah. Now, our one listener, Colin, out in Seattle, he was in the military. I think he still does some military stuff. He may be sharing it with his military friends. Like, yo, check these guys out. Could be. So, there could so, be a lot of stuff so going on. So, Mike, give it up for the troops. Give it up for the troops. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if any troops out there are listening, but if you are, that's a very now we always you know what, we're giving up for our troops every day. We we appreciate what you do, but hack comedians when they're bombing on stage, a lot of times we'll say give it up for the troops to get an applause break to make to get them feel them, better. To, to so get, I don't know if you guys know that, but just just be rest assured that hack comedians on the road use you to feel better about themselves when they're eating their balls. Yeah, if you see them struggling, then they go like, hey, hey, I saw you in the military. Give it up for the military. That yeah. was a way to get out of that. Exactly. The feeling you just had. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ever do that. I won't do it at a benefit for t- troops. <laughs> I yeah, because I feel like we're giving it up for them by being at the benefit. Like, yeah. Like, how many more times could we give it up for them? Yeah, everyone here is giving it up for you. And That's yeah, why they're here. Right. Exactly. We appreciate <laughs> it every day. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, because if yeah, because if we really needed to give it up for them, you'd see that happening like in Dunkin' Donuts when one walks in for a coffee, like woo, yeah. 
Give it up. Give it up for him. Like, Come on, man. Fucking just want coffee. Leave me alone. Even the troops like, nah. Now nah. somebody gave it up to me like before when I was getting my oil changed. So let me get my coffee. I don't want to. I don't want to be giving it up for my coffee. Yeah. Oh, dude. Speaking of that, dude. The other day I was in Dunkin' Donuts and there was like a mental case psycho dude. Must have been just like just out of prison, flipping right. out in my local Dunkin' Donuts, bro. What do you mean though, flipping out? Was it over? I get in there and I just I I walk in and I just see the Spanish guy with like like shitty jailhouse tattoos and like yeah, yeah. going, you can't sweep. Near where I'm fucking eating. You can't do that. Like, top of his lungs, dude. And really? He's pacing back and forth, and I'm like, holy shit. Now, did you ever see that show, like, What Would You Do? Yeah, uh-huh. Like, I'm think like, it's like a perfect scenario for that, What Would You Do? Yeah, yeah. he's yelling, he goes, these are fucking dotheads. They're not Americans. And I'm like, holy fuck, man. Like, and so... The, the one woman that's next to me in line mouths to the girl. No, I mouth to the girl. I go, is, uh, did you call the cops? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She goes, yeah, because he's, he's, there's little kids in there and he's talking to little, little kids. Saying, right. You know, they're not Americans. They don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> flipping out. This woman walks out with her kid and then a guy, her husband comes in and he's standing there to get the woman's food that they ordered because she was scared. Right. And the guy's, See, he sees this big guy. He's like big, tall, muscular, and bald. And he's like, you know what I'm talking about. You're an American. You're white. Fuck these. Like just total racism. He's just right. I'm like, and Carrie, I tell Carrie this afterwards. She goes, yeah. why didn't you leave? I'm like, oh, my fucking coffee order was in. I didn't like coffee. <laughs> but I was like sitting there. She's like, oh, you, you couldn't go to the next Dunkin' Donuts? I'm like, the order was in already. It's like, I can, you know what? I, I hate racism, but I can tolerate it for a little bit until I get my coffee. Well, listen, if if the Dunkin' Donuts was being racist, I would go get my coffee somewhere else. Yeah. But they were being racist on. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I like they're in solidarity with like, them. Like, put it this way. I'm not, like, because, you know, fuck, that show, what, what Would You Do? I, I did exactly what I would do. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I don't know if this motherfucker has a knife yeah, no. or risk my life. Because I think I'm on TV. What would you do? <laughs> yeah. What I would have done with do- well, they say they call the cops. Yeah. All right. So I go out. I get my coffee. I go out. I call Carrie, and I'm watching from the parking lot. So I'm like, I got to see what the hell happens. Right. And cops come in, and they just kind of. Then I see the guy exit, still yelling, but the cops, I guess, are just calming him down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this dude, I, I guess the cops couldn't really do that because all he was doing was just yelling hate speech. Yeah, yeah. You're allowed to do that. Um, but I'm like, I can't believe this guy's probably still on the streets. This guy is a freaking lunatic. He even at one point he sat down in the chair. And was just yelling this to himself. First off, I'm like, what's taking so long with my coffee? This guy's <laughs> having like a whole person. Yeah, you're in there way too long for this story. I mean, well, I, they were making the coffee. I mean, they were ha- I mean, it's probably harder to make the coffee when you're scared. <laughs> when someone's yelling at you, a dot head. Yes. It's hard. How many but I, creams? But I'm like, was that how many I'm creams? I'm like, this guy's like in act three of his musical right now, and I don't have coffee. <laughs> this is racist. <laughs> Dunkin Donuts musical. <laughs> He's like, you motherfucking dotheads. You're like, yeah, that was too equal. But in my head, I wanted to say something to him, like really bad. Like, hey, dude, would, would you <laughs> shut the fuck up? <laughs> uh, you, like, you know what? Remember that part of the speech when when uh, <laughs> when uh, Martin Luther King was like, what's worse than being a racist is <laughs> the guy who just said, in my head. Whoa. No, not Martin Luther King was all about nonviolence. Martin no. Luther King would have supported what I did. <laughs> he would have supported what I did. <coughs> no? Most likely. Yeah. No, most likely. Uh, he preaches nonviolence. I was nonviolent. <laughs> and why? You chose to be nonviolent? I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... <laughs> so you were nonviolent... Because you listen, if I knew he didn't have a knife or a gun, I would have said something. Do you think you would have said something to the maniac? Yes, you said. Let's uh, let me hear your head play out now. He's got no knife. No, he says it too. You luckily, I don't have a knife or a gun, or I would fucking now. You know, I'll be like, why don't you just calm the fuck down, man? What the fuck? It's just a sweet. It's just sweeping. Yeah, I, they're fucking dot heads. Has nothing to do with their sweeping. You're all about germs. So you, but you agree they're dotheads. 
No, I don't agree with that. You're saying that. So you're telling me you white fucking, you let these dot heads come and take your job? Is my coffee done? <laughs> What's taking so long with my coffee? <laughs> I'm trying here, but you gotta, you know, I don't even ask for sugar. Like, I gotta know sugar. Well, you should have this done by now. I need to get a pastry. <laughs> Though during all this, I did notice that they have a new, like, um, blueberry. Uh, I saw that thing. What day. is it called? It's like a, it's like, it looks like that croissant donut, but it's a blueberry. But the word they use just makes it sound so delicious. Oh, yeah. It's a blueberry. Um, what the fuck was it? I got to look it up now. They were out of them. My daughter wanted me to get her one. They were out of them. But she did get this caramel latte donut. Uh-huh. Which like inside is like this cream. It's like a caramel latte cream. Yeah. Inside like a caramel coated donut. A blueberry cobbler. They. <laughs> I think cobbler such a great word. Yeah. What's amazing is in the middle of the racist rant of the lunatic, you were like, I could just like if you feel like if we if we make this in a video form, you would just all the sound would go out. It would like get muffled like dot head, and you would just be. Focusing on blueberry cobbler. Oh my god, that's delicious. Stop it. <laughs> Listen, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a heated moment, it did make me feel better. <laughs> it did. No, all right, but what would you have done? What would I have done? If I'll, I'll ask it again, what would you have done? <clears throat> well, it's hard. I mean, it's easier because, like, like you have this this head hindsight. What I would have said, brain. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I remember. I remember sitting there while he's saying it, and I. Stop myself from saying something. Right. I was about to say something. Then I'm like, what are you fucking <clears throat> dumb? I would have done. I would have assessed him, figured out that it sounded to me. The, the reason why he's got that gripe of sweeping is because in prison, if you're eating and someone fucking comes, cleans by your fucking table, it's disrespectful. Listen, take his racism away. I totally agree. If I'm fucking eating at a table, uh, you don't need to be mopping or sweeping your restaurant by my like. Wait till there's nobody in there. I then got you it. Would sweep you step up, up and so, yell like that, though? No, but I get it. Right, so that, that adds that crazy element to him. No, it adds the crazy element, but I'm saying if we take all that away, they are stupid for doing that. And it's it's a disrespect thing, and that's why I stood up and like, without what I'm fucking. Like, he's, he has prison tats. He's acting like he's in prison, and someone just swept near his fucking prison cell while I was eating. Right. So that's my assessment. I haven't been in prison. So this guy will have no problem knocking my dick in the dirt and just going right back to ranting about dot heads at all. I would have assessed that and be like, there's absolutely nothing I can do here for these people. But you dial 911, I'm going to turn my camera on and I'm going to try to get them on video. So if you ever need any evidence of how crazy this motherfucker is, I'll have it for you. But um, as long as he's not touching anybody, I'm going to step out. It was weird, man. It if was... he went to grab anybody, I would have jumped in. I wish I would have got my ass kicked, but I would have used something. I would have picked something. No, up. no, I would have jumped in if something went down, but it was a very tense yeah. situation, man. But it's weird. It's like one of those situations like you're like, like, yeah, should I have skipped my coffee and gotten out of there? Yeah, but you're like almost like paralyzed with like, what the fuck's going on here? I don't And there's yeah, like these two. Coffee's really. These, they're like these three old ladies, one young uh, Indian girl and two old ladies like in fear. Yeah, no. And it's like, what, are we just going to leave her in there? No, you can't. Maniac? Yeah. Like, I felt like I had to be there in case something went down. But then when, Maybe. The, but when the big you muscle saw. guy came in, I'm like, hey, you got it, buddy. I'm out of here. Maybe when, if you make eye contact with a guy and say, what happened? Like, like may, I might have done that. I might have done, like, I've been in places where crazy guys are ranting. And like, I get the eye contact. Like, and I say, like, in the most common, like, what just happened, bro? Like, and then, like, a <laughs> conversation. I'll tell you. And then he'll tell me. And then maybe I'm on his side for a minute. Well, that's what the the guy that came in the big the big guy the the husband of the woman he seemed to be standing in a way to like block that guy from going towards those girls. Mm -hmm. And then while his wife was calling the cops outside, right, right, because he wasn't ordering; he was just sitting there standing like with his arms folded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when that guy's talking to him. You know what? You know you you're white. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but These that guy, Americans. that guy, the 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 rant crazy guy ranter. Yeah, he knew why that white dude was there. Yeah, 
But he knew that that white dude could probably stomp him down on the ground. So he flipped it and was like, man, you know, you know, because he was trying to get the white dude on his side. No, but he started getting up again. He started getting up and there was like a Chinese family and he's like uh, calling them gooks. They are. Well, with, that's with an accurate kids. description. I don't believe that. <laughs> no, they're gooks. And sorry. No, they're not. They're not gooks. <laughs> that, that was only like the second time I've been around like real racism. Real, you, really? We're like. No, like I've heard people joke, mm-hmm. like do racist jokes, racist humor, but to I've I've only been twice around it where it's like directed at somebody. Yeah, yeah. In my life, one that, and then Matt Jenkins one time. Oh, white dudes at him. Oh, me and Matt Jenkins did a gig for James. It's some like uh, I don't know, not like Knights of Columbus or VFW Hall. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the Yankees were in the playoffs. Right. In their bar area, which was separate from where the fundraiser was. Yeah, yeah. So we're both off stage, headliners on, and I'm like, I want to go see the game. So I knock on the door to the bar area. Right. That you have to go to outside. I go, hey, oh, what's up, man? I'm I'm with the comedy show fundraiser next door. I'm one of the comedians. Do you mind if I come in and watch the Yankee game? He's like, yeah, yeah, come on in. And Matt comes right behind me, and he sees him. He goes, uh, members only. I was like, whoa. Wow. And I, I just said, ah, no, thanks, man. I go, yo, Matt, I'm sorry. He's like, nah, I'm used to it. I'm like, I never. Wow. I've I would have been like, man, Matt, I'll, I'll tell you the scores, man. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so dirty to do that. Yeah. Right now. And Matt's like, if the guy would have <clears throat> sat and met Matt for like a moment, I mean, he's, he's, he's caramel color and basically talks white. Like he's, yeah. I mean, Give he's me. technically black. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's so white. I mean, he's whiter than me. Yeah, that's a group that's going to go with the technicalities. Yeah, they're going with technicalities. Yeah, like, yeah. We can't take chances. Yeah. We just changed the upholstery. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we only have one bathroom. Can't do it. Ah, uh, man. But no, it was definitely a weird situation. Kelly no, was bet. dying that I, I stayed for the coffee. She's like, she goes, only you. Oh, you, there's a big thing, and you, you got to get your coffee. I'm like, but the order happened already. Yeah, did the order happen before the rant started? No, I was ranting when I was in there, but I. I it but you weren't really paying attention at first. Like, it was just a dude yelling about sweeping. So you're like, all right, whatever. I so I was it. like, all right, this guy's flipping out. And then when I ordered, then it cur- turned into the Dodd head, and then right. we're Americans, fuck these people. And then he started. Did he ever he try to look pacing. at you and get. What? Did he try to look at ever look at you and try to get some. Dude, doctors? he was in his own mind, and then he, the only people he was looking at is the Indian people and the Chinese people. When he was directly calling them something, and then he would like stand next to the table, hitting his hand like this, going, "Yeah, yeah, they're not American. They can't be sweeping. They're trying to kill us." I'm like, "Whoa, Bubba." <laughs> Maybe somebody should have said, just yelled out, "Take care, man. Thank you." Take care, man. Thank yeah. you. He like, was sitting. At, now. He was sitting. He was sitting at his table, getting up and pacing. Sitting you're, at his table. Done. Sitting. Obviously, your meal is done. Take off. Whose meal? His. Yeah, he, he had no food left. He it's over, man. Let's go. Take I care. Know. I know. Take I care, like buddy. I. I mean, I'm no psychiatrist, but I think he had mental problems. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, based on my field survey. If, <laughs> if if they sent me out to survey the mental state of the Dunkin' Donuts at the time, I'd be like, you may have a crazy person in there. <laughs> Maybe. But I gave it to the cops, man. They were pretty con- – they were trying to – they're like – they probably could have just busted in there and – Tased drag, them? Dragged them out. That's what I was hoping for, a good tasing on the outside. I mean, in my heart, that's what yeah. I wanted. <laughs> but like – because Kerry's like, you're sta- – I was like, yeah, I'm just sitting here in the parking lot sipping coffee. Uh Cody's next to me like, why aren't we going to the fucking park, dude? Yeah. <laughs> and then I see them come out. I'm like, here it comes, here it comes. And he's just waving his hands in the air. Yeah, yeah. The cop's just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I'm like, all right, nothing's happening. Good yeah, yeah. Here. Like the, the cop's job is to get him out. If you yeah. want to rant all day long, you can't, you can't do it in their business. You're, you can't disrupt somebody's business because you have a point of view. I just yeah. don't like that that guy's local and walking around here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I hear you. Yeah, it's yeah. Just like, oh, great. Yeah, that guy's in your neighborhood. Jeez, I don't know where. Uh, it's jeez. You it's should like, follow him. Which one? That dunk that we always go by your house up there? No, nah, this is one that's on the way to the dog park. I mean, it's it's not really near my neighborhood, but 
Right. I mean, I'm always over there. Right, right. You know what I mean? Maybe you got to see him in the dog park one day, just sitting there sharpening his knives. Cody will protect me. He's pretty vicious when he thinks I'm under attack. Okay, good. Good. But, uh... (laughs) Yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody has their what they would do moments like that. No, but that got me thinking about that TV show. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that TV show would turn people, make people do stupid things. Because like on the TV show, they always praise people on that TV show that stand up for these things. Yeah, but a lot of but yeah, it's good when it's set up, but when it's a fucking maniac and you get hurt. Yeah, when I I don't know what episodes you watch. Usually, when I watch those episodes, it's always take the higher road, call cops. Protect yourself. Get yourself away. Now, I've seen it where the guy said something, where the, where the where the customers would say something. Yeah, I've done the ones where there's a, a rude fuck. I mean, I've seen somebody who's rude. Look, when I'm in a store and someone's rude to the to the people, I say something. Yeah. If I say like somebody's like you know, let me get the, like like assholes. You know, like like give me four donuts, sugar. What's up? You can't give me the sugar ones like that. I say something. I don't give a fuck. I know you're a piece of shit. And yeah, you might, might, might have just, might kind of want to fight me. I don't care. Right. I say something. I always do. Like I'm gonna, uh, <clears throat> but this guy's not just a normal customer. Right. Right. This isn't a guy complaining that his his coffee's too. No. Nah, this was like pacing ranter. Yeah. No. Nah. Like it looked like he's just out of prison. Like. Yeah. No. And I would have said that's the assessment I would have came up with because it sounds like that's what he's he's reliving the, his. His cafeteria moments like this didn't happen there. That's why he's got your Asians and gooks and your fucking dot heads. Everyone's separate. Yikes! Yeah, but that's my story. What have you been up to? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, you know, I want to talk about the cop thing. The cop thing? The oh, cop. The, oh yeah, yeah. I want to talk about that, but I want to talk about it. You know and. It's something that's really been on my mind, not the show itself, because the show, really, <clears throat> quite honest with you, did zero to my soul. It didn't do nothing. Like, right. unlike other times where it made me feel really bad, and I was like, oh, that sucked, and it hurt me. Uh-huh. This show did not hurt me. It just, uh, this show just disgusted me. That's what it did. It disgusted me. Like, wow, you guys collectively are pieces of shit, man. And I, and, explain to the listeners what you're talking about. And I'm going to explain. I, I, just, okay. I had did a comedy show for <clears throat> the majority of the people there were police officers in Ringwood, New Jersey. And I'll say Ringwood and I'll let you know the town. Uh, Ringwood, New Jersey is a, is a lake town of mountains. Probably half redneck, half people with money. Um, it's crime rate of 1%. Shit, the cops who are there aren't arresting anybody because there's nothing going on up there. It's fucking Ringwood, okay? Mm-hmm. There was about 260 people, I guess mostly cops, but then like other municipal workers like firemen and EMT drivers. Um, and there was probably 260 men, tops, 20 women, tops. It was a beefsteak. We got there. It was in a barn, the clubhouse, the Ringwood Lake House. It's like a barn. And when I got there, it was so loud. And they were just, everybody was sitting, standing back by the bar, getting drinks, and just loud. And I had received an email earlier. I think we talked about it last time. In the email, it said, This group tends to be rowdy, just plow through. That's what the email said. So when the email says that, you know it's going to be a disaster. Yeah. You know, because usually if it is a rowdy crowd, they won't mention it. If it's a normal rowdy crowd, but if it's a rowdy crowd, they got to put in, "Hey, it's a rowdy crowd." And when that's the case, it's a fucking rowdy crowd. So I get there, and it's just loud. Then Goomba Johnny shows up, and he was like, he sat down, like, "I think there's gonna be a disaster." And he's like, "Hey, you never know, man. Sometimes these things pull together." I'm like, "Okay." And then he can just hear it getting louder and louder. He's like, "You know what? I think you're right on this disaster." And <laughs> the guy who was running the organization got up on stage. Three separate times. One time, like 30 minutes before the show time, hey, guys, we still got a lot of meat in the back. And if you guys still want to, you know what I mean, booze, whatever. Yeah. No one even listened to him. Um, hey, guys, we're going to be doing a 50-50. No one shut up. For the guy 
running their event. The, the decibel went higher. He's trying to talk. Like, so I'm like, they're not even listening to the guy organize this event. Then he goes up and says, hey, guys, in five minutes, we're going to start the comedy show, all right? So you're by standing in the back there. You're going to come up. Nobody's listening. No one's listening. No mm-hmm. one's like, hey, nobody. You're have to come to the front. I'm like, I, I kept saying, why are you talking? I kept saying to him, why are you talking? You're telling people to come to the front. Who's, no one's listening to you. So why don't you make them listen to you and then give your instructions, you dumb motherfucker. But you just gave instructions to people who aren't listening to you. <laughs> so he gets off stage. I'm standing next to the stage. And then a guy stands up and says to me, so what's your plan for this rowdy group? Mm-hmm. And I was like, my plan. He goes, oh, what's your plan to corral this rowdy group? I said, my plan is to do 30 minutes and go get a check. I can give a fuck about this rowdy group. To be honest with you. My job isn't to corral people. To make them want to listen to a show. That's a, that yeah, is, yeah. That's yeah. That's that's the game plan. That's that's yeah. what you should do. It's like you, we should even be here, right? Like, why do you even have comedy here? So I said to the guy, I'm like, can I ask you a question? Why do you guys do this every year? He's like, you know, I don't know. And he's just an attendee. He's like, I don't know why, but a nice guy. He's like, you know what? Sit. Um, he goes, if you need to look at anybody for uh, for jokes or any insight, just look at me. I'll talk to you. And he was like, good like that. He was like, right there in the front. He, there was, out of 260, there was 15 people who were nice. Ugh. And the rest were so loud and obnoxious and mean that a minute and a half in, oh, so then the guy says, what do you want me to do to bring you up? Drunk. Of course he's drunk, fucking dickhead. Yeah. He's like, what do you want me to do to say? I, I said, all I want you to do is go up there and say he was on last comic standing Welcome to the stage. And at the very last thing you say, welcome to the stage, Mike Gaffney. That's what you're going to say. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Guys, you guys ready? Now, no one's ready. <laughs> so you're asking this. I don't know why. You guys are ready? We're going to start the show. You guys, gonna, woo, come on. Let's hear it. All right. You guys like Last Comic Standing? It's a good show. Last Comic Standing, he was on it. Mike Gaffney was on the show. So we're going to come on up to the stage, Mikey. Come on, man. Come on to the stage. What the fuck are you doing? It's like you're convincing your nephew to come do comedy. Uh, just, just introduce me, you... What the fuck, so man? I go up, and no one even claps. So I say, I try. I'm like, come on, guys. You guys ready to have a good time? And I got maybe half of them to clap. I was like, all right. And I told a story about getting pulled over, and it got a laugh. <clears throat> but it just went... It got half the people laughed, and then the other half was still talking. And then by the time I got... A minute and 40 seconds into my act, 70% of the room was in full blown conversation and they were yelling, Ah, get off the stage! I was up two minutes. <clears throat> get off the stage. Ah, oh, this guy sucks. Boo! That's what I'm hearing. I haven't even done jokes. So, like, if you were booing my material, I might take that personal. You're just booing. I haven't got any jokes out. Yeah. So, in my mind, I keep seeing the email plow through plow through so i'm believing that this was anticipated and that me saying go fuck yourselves you pieces of shit and walking off was not an option for me since we already know it's bad and we need you to plow through it anyway so i'm standing in the ground and i'm just gonna keep doing this shit so i did it to tables to did it to a group, group of young people and just went back and forth back and forth until um i got booed and yelled at, and booed, and some guy was like, "You're a fag, you're gay." Like a fucking forty year old man just said, "You're gay." I'm like what? The fuck are you talking about? I bet these these places. This is probably they probably do this to everybody every year, and it's just they just hire comics to be shitty to them. I've heard uh, of that with other these beef steaks, where it's like that's what they do, right? They hire comedians to fucking yell at. Well, when I, I know got somebody that, that does it and he makes good money every year and they hire him because they throw bread at him. When I got down off stage, Kuba Johnny come and got me early. I was supposed to do 30. He came and got me at oh, 19 and a half. Mm-hmm. I got off stage. <clears throat> I was 19 more than I would have done. <laughs> I left the stage, drove to Bananas where I was getting paid and Arlene said to me, 
had it go, and I was like, it was disgusting. And she was like, I knew it. I'm so sorry. She's like, I'm done. I will not book it again. She goes, this is the fourth year. They asked me to do it, and it's never been good. It gets worse and worse. Last year, someone walked off five minutes in. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I said, yeah, it's not worth It's not worth it. So here's my point, and this is what I've been wanting to talk about. And this is something I need to, need to talk about. It's not only these police organizations. I will say... I've done a lot of I've done a lot of fundraisers that involve police, but not a majority of police. Okay. You know what I mean like like fundraise like <clears throat> police will do fundraisers for you know, they'll do a fundraiser for, you know, Alzheimer's or breast cancer. And mm-hmm. when they're involved in organizations, other people come involved, wives and families and kids. You know what I mean? So it's usually a regular fundraiser. You know what I'm saying? Like uh-huh. a regular fundraiser. Um, the the six beef steaks or just fun just police organization comedy shows. I've done six of them in my career. Four of them have been absolutely fucking horrible. Yeah, and two of them were. One was really good, and one was pretty good. You know what I mean? But. But there were strictly police things. They were just for cops. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one in, in the brownstone with the 500, 600 cops, whatever, they're there. And they're screaming and yelling and moving the spotlight and just <clears throat> pieces of shit. And that was the one you did with Bobby Kelly? No, that was the union, me and Bobby Kelly. Oh, okay. That was years ago. Brownstone was two years ago. And they moved the spotlight on you? Moved the spotlight on me. Said to. Now, they, they did not quiet for anybody. For Two people went up from the organization saying, hey, guys, we got the raffles going to happen after the show. Blah, blah, blah. No one listened. No one listened to these guys saying we got raffles. We're going to start the show in a minute. That's when you know. When these guys won't take the time to say, guys, shut the fuck up in this room. Have some respect. We have a show going on. But yeah. they didn't try. That means they don't care. So I'm going to go up because this guy didn't even try to make them quiet. Mm-hmm. And it's happened at every show. And Bobby Kelly's show, they were loud and rude. They stayed quiet for Kenny Michaels because they knew Kenny Michaels. Okay. So Kenny was doing all inside jokes. He knew them all. Stevie right. Steve and Joey Joe and Jimmy with your fucking ham and cheese sandwich. And they love them. <laughs> Jimmy with your ham and cheese sandwich. <laughs> and they love them because they, get to, they go to the deli every day and fucking Kenny makes their fucking sandwich. Right? So he does 15 minutes up front. Does his his uh, Sopranos? They want to hear that because they hear it all the time. Right. Then he brings me up, and they gave me one minute, and then they were like, "Fuck this!" and started talking. <clears throat> My friend was in the back when I was getting brought up. Some guy, some old fucking miserable scumbag cop was. He's like, "Ah, this guy's gonna suck." I didn't even get up to the front yet, and he said, "This guy's gonna suck." Ugh. So that's just pieces of shit. Okay. Yeah. So, I now what? Here's what has been on my mind about this. Um, pol- you know, aside from doing college, pull it from the comedy show for a minute in the bigger picture, how cops have been getting a you know, a bit in the press for pr- police brutality for you know Black Lives Matter, all that stuff. You know right. what I mean? And the biggest gripe society has against cops is that when when, when society says cops suck, a lot of people go, some cops are great, we're not all, and, and they're 100% right. They are 100% right. I'm not a blanket statement guy. I don't like to say everybody's anything. Yeah. So, but the biggest gripe in society is, well, if there is good cops, why don't you never stand up? Why do the good cops never out the bad cops? You guys don't do it. And it's not evident any more than when I'm doing my comedy shows and there's 300 scumbag pieces of shit yelling and screaming and not one of these so-called good cops that are out there stand up and said, yo guys, this is disrespectful and rude. Shut the fuck up and let's listen to the guy. Not one. In all the shows I've done, over 2,000 police officers, not one has ever stood up. Not one has ever come up to me afterwards and said, yo man, I'm really sorry, man. They're fucking dickheads. I wish I could have gotten them to be quiet. Not one. Mm. Not one. Just shows to me that collectively and when they're together, they're not 
good people. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. They're not. That is not a good group of people. And I'll compare. I've done over 200 recovery shows for tens of thousands of heroin addicts, drug addicts, criminals, people with one day clean, people with one day out of prison. Yeah. I've never been booed. I've never been fucking hassled. I've never been yelled at. I've never been called gay. i never nothing. Tens of thousands of addicts. These are supposed to be the dredge of the society. Of course, if I was to talk to a cop, drug addicts are the biggest pieces of shit out there. They're garbage. Yeah. But the cops are the best. The protectors of society. However, every show I've done for them, they've done nothing but be pieces of shit. <clears throat> yeah. And every show I've done for people who are supposed to be dirtbags, they've been loving. That's why I think it's just a thing. It's, I think that's what they do. I've never seen anybody have a good experience, even when they're good. I did a fundraiser I, with, let me with say, the dude, Mayo, who was a cop, and on. they were lukewarm. Let me just say this, because I want to. I want to get this point, and then you can. I want to yeah, talk yeah. about it. Okay, we can talk about it. Um, so I was telling somebody this story, and every co- every comic you ever talk to has a horror story about cops. Right. Every comic, every comic will say most of the things they do for cops are bad. But they all have at least one or two that are right. horrible, right? Every comic. That's not a coincidence, man. Right. That's not a coincidence that this group of pieces of shit are arrogant, not nice, and think they're the best on earth. That is what is happening when they're eating beefsteak. That's exactly what's happening when they're on the fucking road pulling people over. That yeah. arrogant piece of shit attitude. Mm-hmm. What comes out? Don't tell me it doesn't come out there. Only comes out here when they're shoving their fucking face full of meat and hanging out with their boys. I don't believe it. Uh-huh. So, as I was talking to another comic Saturday, it, we said we should all not. We should. I know people make good money, but we need to figure out a way to make better money somewhere else. I told my manager. I told my manager, do not put me on another cop show, ever. After this one, yeah. Okay. What, do you, what did he said, say? I actually said it after James's cop show in the Brownstone. Uh, okay. But after this one, I said, do not. He goes, I won't ever put you on another show like this. He goes, there. I said, if you tell me right now, Mike, you're going to lose 50% of your income because we're not doing police benefits, I'll tell you. I'll figure it out. Don't put me on another one. That's how committed I am to not doing them. Okay? I, I agree. Um. And so while I was talking to this other comic, I told him that. And he's like, you know what? Man, we all need to band together because quite honestly, dirtbag cops like that do not deserve us. No. We are people, good people. They do not deserve the show. They don't deserve it. And we should have pride in ourselves. To go, no, you get our heart when you deserve it. Yeah. And if I think what I want to do is I want to put together – I want to make like a little documentary. Not, I'm, not, I'm not trying, again, if there's a cop listening, I don't have cop friends. Yes, I know there's good people. I'm not saying that. But in my little small sample of 600% cop shows, four of them were tragic. Mm. I've done 200 recovery drugs, drug addict shows, and none were tragic. So right. tell me why that is. And if a cop who's a friend, who if you can explain to me why the dirtiest dirtbag criminals were good, but the highest of the highest were shitbags, you and I'll shut my mouth. But you right. won't be able to. You're going to defend it? You're either going to defend it or you're going to support me because you can't defend that shit. And I wish I videotaped it because I wanted to videotape it just to show people how they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, what I want to do is maybe I want to make a little documentary on how this and the Black Lives Matter and the so-called Blue Lives Matter movement, all these things, how they are connected, how I can show you why this, why society doesn't like cops, because this is what they act like. Yeah. And I want to get like comics. I want to, this is something I'm going to do. I know I'm going to do it. It's a passion of mine because I really, really think they don't deserve it. And I think we need to stick together and say, you don't deserve us. You haven't earned it. No. You know? And um, I want to get comics who are 
just I don't want to. And again, I'm not going to make a video about bashing cops. Suck cop. No, they don't suck. I know they don't suck. You know what I'm saying? But these events are horrible, and they're not worth. It. They're not worth it, and they're they're disrespectful to us. Yeah, well, Booker's just got to stop sending people there. And just be like, listen, no, nobody wants to, and then maybe. But you know what it is? It's money, and I think I think most people will just be like, fuck it, give me the money. Yeah, you know but, what I mean. Give me the money, I'll go bomb for the right money. Like, look, yeah, look, look at, yeah, I get it. If you told me it was seventy percent of your salary, man, you can't lose that. Can't lose it. Now, yeah, you don't want to do it because it's. But my even my manager was like, I was like, if you're telling me fifty percent of my salary, I still would not do it. He goes, it's not even close to fifty percent of your salary. No, it's, it's not worth. He goes, you can miss it. And I'm sure there's a lot of guys who it's not even. Maybe a guy like Mark DeMeo. Because he's got a niche. Yeah, he sh- he should be doing all those. Yes, he, but that literally should be his tour. Even he struggles, and he's a fucking cop. I did one with him, and it wasn't like they were belligerent, but they were just like they listened, but they were acting like we were bothering their party. Right. It's like yeah, but see, that's a different. I can deal with that. Yeah, I could deal with that. That no, was fine. It was actually you know it wasn't bad. Was that the one I was on with you? No, it was uh, not. A, no, this was just one in Dover, which we had no spotlight. It was very weird. It was just like a, I don't right. know what the what made it weird. I think it was like, like a combination of everything. I just what I want to do is get some, some comics who've been around for a while. Just get their experience. I don't want like have you done cop get cop organizations? Give me one or two. How bad were they in comparison to your career? If you did ten, thirty, fifty, how many were bad? Mm-hmm. I just want to put those numbers together. Yeah. And I want to make a little documentary on hell gigs for, for the cops. Mm-hmm. And not saying that cops are bad, but this is another thing to look at in the big picture of why police are looked at the way they are looked at. Like, yeah. it's not a coincidence that everybody in society thinks police are arrogant fucknuts. You know what I mean? That's not a coincidence. Especially when all the shows I do, they're arrogant fucknuts. Now, I, I, like uh, I said, how many? Com- I don't know how many cops. You- like I know Mark DeMeo. I know um, there's another comic. I can't think of his name right now. He's a cop. Is also a comic. Um, you know, and I know cops who are not cops, just regular com- cops. Good. And they're good people. I'm sure they're good people. I'm not. You know what I mean? Some guys. Right. I, know since I know one cop. He's a cop since he's two years old. He's a cop. I, he's been wanting to be a cop since he's two. He's a cop. Yeah. Right? Uh, I know him since he's two. See, he's a good kid. He's a good uh, kid. Uh-huh. I know he's a good boy. A good heart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but collectively, the shit that comes out of their mouths and the way they treat people, is dis- that's disgusting, man. If if I was at a show for a PTA and a bunch of parents treated me like that, we'd be like, well, where are we? That you get to talk to me like this. Who do you think you are that you get to talk to a human this way? Yeah. That's how they are. Yeah, and they I don't think stop. there's nothing we can do to stop it. It's just huh? there's nothing you can do to stop it. No, nothing you can do to stop it while it's happening. And nothing, but there is something I mean, to do to stop before you go and do it. I think enough. You just gotta stop doing it. You just gotta stop, stop sending comedians. It. We don't do comedy. But but you that. know it's just like comedy. There's always com- it's just the same reason why we get paid shit compared like even the pay even the pay you get good pay but even if you look at your good pay if you took the pay from like the 80s if you, yeah yeah like you're still getting shit pay yeah i know for you know what i mean and it's like you know why because there's always some comic that will do it for something right you just oh you know what i mean because we're so itching for stage time we're like fuck it and especially the ego of the comic to be like i'll get him yeah. yeah you know what i want to set I want to. I want this thing. I, I'm doing it. I'm doing this video. I wanted to not to not only talk about the cops, but to talk about us as comedians. How we should have more pride and and respect for ourselves when it comes to shit like that. And say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't have to do nothing like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're telling me I got to do a fucking fundraiser for a fire department, and it's going to be for, if it's for a soccer team, it's going to be a mix of cops, firemen, and families. And it, it's a little rowdy. They get together, and they get drunk, and they talk. That's part of the job. you got to muscle through that. I don't mind that. Yeah. Groups of men 
standing up in full blown conversation and then in the middle of their conversation yelling, Get the fuck out of here, moving spotlights, calling you names, booing you. A 70 year old man just saying boo and that's the only words coming out of his mouth. Ugh. I mean, that is disgusting. And those things like that, I should be like, no, that's not acceptable in my life. Right. I don't want that in my life. Because I'm a good person and I'm a comic who knows that I, I deserve more. And I think comics say, you know, fuck you, officers. You don't get to treat us like shit. No, we're not coming to do your shit show. Eat your beefsteak, get drunk, cheat on your wives with a stripper, you fucking douchebags. Yeah. Try to get, try to mainstream comics and we got to go in there and beat, get beaten up. Drew, Goomba Johnny, I, look, I don't know Goomba Johnny. The guy's been around for 30 something years, man. You know what I mean? This is what you got to do? You got to stand there and get blue. Get, you know what I mean? That's why some people turn down, like, you turn down gigs that you know are going to be uncomfortable for you. You know what I mean? What? Some people get, oh, you can turn down a gig? Yes, because I know what I'm going into. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I've even seen, like, comics that are a level above yours that, like, won't do any, like, fundraisers because, like, you right. don't know what you're going into. Fuck that. Yeah. No, I'd rather just go to a club right. and make whatever money. Right. You know what I mean? Because I'm not dealing with rules and. Absolutely. Standing on the floor like a like like just like the least amount of effort to put on a good show. Yeah, yeah. Like you oh, work yeah, too yeah. hard. It's like why, right. <laughs> why? Right. I did, no, absolutely. I mean, even on a smaller level, one time a guy offered me fifty bucks to do a Wednesday gig. I walked in. It was looked like a TGI Fridays type bar. Right. I go, where's the show? He's like, oh, right here. I'm like, not for me. It's not. I'm. Can we go right. in the back room? Now we're gonna perform right here. There's a band down right now. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and no one's paying attention to them. The sports right. on. I got you know what? What do you have? Five comics on the show. You got plenty of comics. I'm out of here. Did right, right. Even yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is stupid, and I'm not painfully going through this for fifty dollars. I don't need fifty dollars right. that bad. Right, right. Even if I did, I need my soul. Yeah, yeah. Fuck those gigs, man. Well, like it used to be back in the day, you hear comics are like you know. You guys do those late night spots at the clubs and those those shit spots in the in front of the owners. And it's horrible, but there was a reason why you did them because they were a bigger payoff than just doing. You know what I mean? Coming into Jersey, going in the woods in a farmhouse to do comedy for a bunch of pieces of shit that don't deserve it. What was that for? What did that serve? I got some cash. That's it. Well, I'll figure another way to get cash out then, won't I? Because I don't deserve that. Not me, not my career, not nah. who I am as a person. Like, why would I, why am I challenged? Billy Garen, who's been doing comedy over 30 years, lasted five minutes. Dude, he's a professional. He's done a million gigs. Do you know how many gigs he's been on like this? A million. I know. A million. Walked on five minutes. They were so disgusting. He got off and said, fuck this. I did that at a cop uh, fundraiser at Uncle Vinny's. They, I literally did not one joke. They were, I knew it was going to be shitty because I walk into the bathroom as I get there, and they're having their own comedy show in the bathroom. Yeah, and yeah. I came out, I go, I was doing with Joey Cole. I'm like, God, oh, this is going to suck. He's like, why? I'm like, because the show's already started in the men's room. Right. You know, they're already, you know, they're doing yeah, the headline yeah. set in there. <laughs> I go up. They're just yelling belligerent. They're just yelling at me. They're writing things on place napkins and showing them to me. Right. I can't even see what it is. Literally, I'm 10 minutes in. I just go to Dino. I'm like, how much? What, what do I? I don't even know what to do here, man. I can't even crowd work these guys. Even when yeah. I started crowd working, they're just yelling. Yeah, yeah. there's no me. work with them. Yeah. So then I'm like, he's like, yeah, just, you know, just wrap it up. So I bring Joey Cola up. I didn't even stay. I walked out, got in my, because I had a late show for a regular crowd, non fundraiser. We had a 10 yeah. o'clock show. So I just took a ride to Best Buy. I'm walking around. And I'm talking with my wife on the phone, telling her whole story. She's like, oh, would you bomb? I'm like, I didn't buy. I didn't do my jokes. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even say I bombed. I just stood on right. stage and got yelled at for 10 minutes for $250. And uh, then I come back as the show's wrapping up. And I don't know how it went for Joey. Um, but oh, he's, I, he just runs past Dino. He goes, just send me my check and leaves. Oh, okay. And I go, what happened? He's like, nah, he, he, did, he did better than you, but it was still a rough you know, he he's, right. he did his time and did his headline set because he there was nowhere to pass the mic to. Him, right, right. You know, but it wasn't fun. It sounded like to me, whatever he did, he didn't have a good time. Right, right. And Dino said that that's how the cops are. But they yeah. write, they see write, there you go. But they write it, fat checks, and that's I know. What, and Dino, I get yeah. him taking the money, and 
But I think if we make enough people, enough comics, new comics, older comics, whatever, make enough comics realize mm-hmm. what you're in for and what kind of the, the what they do to us collectively. Yeah. And if there's a group of people who go like, you know what? We like just say I'm just saying like if you put people on a list like a Ted Alexandro, or Mike Vecchio, all these guys like, you know what? I won't do those gigs because we deserve better than that. Maybe then someone will go, all right. Well, I guess we're not doing it either. I, I deserve better too. Right. You know who wants to be the guy who's like, well, I, don't, I deserve shit. I'm a piece of shit. I'm gonna go get yelled at for an hour and get four hundred bucks. Nah. Yeah, you know I'm saying there's gonna be people who do that, but if enough people say we're not, maybe they won't. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, even if I can just reach new comics and be like, "Listen, man, just tell them no. Tell them if they say, oh, we got a thousand dollar budget. Would you like it? Of course, you would like that budget. But think about what you're going to do and what disrespect you are doing to our thing. It's disrespectful to our thing to say, yeah, you can shit on me for an hour so I can get my uh, money. That's just that's no respect for yourself. No respect for your art. Yeah. No respect for yourself. We already." Jump through so many hoops in this game. Yeah. Yo, let me pause a second. Justin's calling me. Hold on. Okay. Okay, we're back. We're about an hour in, and unfortunately, I have to cut this uh, riveting. Oh, actually, I have a few more minutes. We could still talk about it. We could wrap up your uh, your cop story. I have to go pick up Justin at school. Yeah, it's nothing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to work on something. Who knows? Who knows? Just uh, So yeah. you're going to work on a... a you're going to try and interview comics? I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know yeah. that I want to do something. I know that. I say just let it go and don't do any more fucking cop gigs. Oh, I'm not going to do No, I don't say let it go, though, because that's, that's just not going to happen. People, somebody needs to speak about it. Someone yeah. To, and I think I'm going to. Yeah. I think I'm going to do it just because I have experience working with some of the worst, according to society, some of the worst people on the planet. Uh, drug addicts, heroin addicts, dope fiends, they're the worst people on the planet. According to society, uh-huh. and cops, oh, drug addicts are drug addict pieces of shit. Yeah, but they've never—I've never been booed once at one of their shows. So, yeah, well, it's just a different type of people. Because you, well, like, the, people. I mean, the way drug addicts are, half of, you know, even when I mean, even when I was getting high, you, you meet nice guys. No, I'm not saying like though, maniacs like police officers are. Yeah. Uh, but I'm saying the comparison of doing 10,000 com- comedies, performing for 10,000 drug addicts and not one boo, perform for 2,000 fucking pieces of shit cops and all boos, that's insane numbers. And they are the ones I got to fucking respect. They're the ones we got to give it up for. They're the ones with military. They get fucking honors. Why? Why? Why do you get honors? Oh, they put themselves in life in, in 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 danger. No, they get paid, and then they put themselves in life danger. They're not putting themselves in life danger and collecting a check afterwards. They get paid. That's why they do it. Because for the most part, they don't put themselves. Ringwood probably hasn't seen a fucking gun, but <sighs> I did four hundred and sixty fucking cops in Jersey City. Real crime. Real crime fighters. Real fucking police officers. Not one boo fucking standing ovation they had their priest there laughing it was awesome it was an awesome show real cops real cops jersey city real cops not fuck nut fucking ringwood lake what crimes you had there you got a half-assed meth lab maybe you got a fucking arrest somebody don't have their fishing license huh somebody doesn't have their fishing license exactly a boating license hey how big's that trout yeah (laughs) tough them I mean, I'm not trying to... Cop is a cop. You're fucking protecting your serve. That's your job. Protect and serve. I get it. I'm not shitting on the whole industry. But it just goes to show you, I, I dealt with, like, hardcore cops, and they were fucking awesome. And then you go up here to these redneck fucking wannabes, and they're scumbags, arrogant. But then you go to the Patterson cops, they were arrogant, too. So I'm not saying that. I'm just, you know... Yeah. I've had the, the worst people in the world, heroin addicts, fucking be so loving and caring mm-hmm. but the people that we're all we nobody honors them nobody honors the crackheads there's no honor for them <laughs> no honor for crackheads there's none <laughs> because i gotta have a day for military day and cop day for people like that fuck out of here and you want me to go perform and make you laugh and you're gonna treat me like shit you just want to treat us like shit because that's who you are you're pe- you're not good people done 
I said that in Patterson. You guys are not good people. If you were good people, you wouldn't let this happen. Good people do not allow that. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, I got to start asking more, like, when people, like, sometimes James will text me, like, you free this day? I go, yeah. Fundraiser. Yeah, boom. What? Then a week before, it's like, what are we doing for? It's for um, uh, uh, Clean Church and Cop Fundraiser. <laughs> like, Jesus loves clean comedy and cops. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I don't want to do that. So – the, the whole point, so uh, so I can just close it up. I want to like create. I want to figure something out. Talk to other comics. Get some s- numbers down there. I can just show that there is a di- direct connection between what's happening out there in the world today with the cops being, you know, getting a bad rap for who they are and for what I see when they're behind the scenes. There's yeah. is no is no coincidence. Is what I'm saying. No coincidence. No, and I want to show. I, I just want to. I want to do. And I want. I want to get comics to not perform for them because they don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. They don't. And if some comics can tell me, "Oh, bro, I've done a hundred cop events and they've been amazing." Okay, well then maybe yeah. my maybe my numbers are off and I shouldn't wait. Yep. You know, yeah. I'm just going to do it for myself. To be honest with you. So. We'll do it if it makes you feel better and maybe it'll you know do shit you know. Change, change these egomaniacs. Oh, we're not changing them. We're no, changing, yeah. change, I want to change us. Change us, yeah, yeah. I want to change us taking shit jobs. Like when they did the union for the comics, they weren't trying to change. They were trying to get paid, right? But they knew that they weren't going to, no club owners was going to pay them. But if they figured if all the comics got together, they would have no choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if all the comics band together and say, you know what? You don't deserve it. You're not good. We're not doing those shows. It's not good shows. Who cares if they could be egomaniacs all day? Hire a stripper, grope at her all day. Yeah, I was at a one a beefsteak, cop beefsteak in 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 Bergenfield one year, a long time ago. And they had two strippers, like full new strippers, dude. The way the cops grabbed her, these girls, I felt like we just raped two girls. Yeah, these girls, they're strippers, but they were like. Guys were grabbing them as if it was the very first time they're touching a nipple ever. Yeah. I was so disgusted. I was at a table with, like, meathead fucking cops. And I was like, what the fuck? This is disgusting. Cops like, well, if you're fucking gay, don't come. I'm like, not gay. The guy's shoving his fingers in her asshole. Like, it's the first time he ever seen an asshole. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, whatever. And I, I, I got out. I left. I was like, no, no. That's gross. So yeah. <laughs> so we'll wrap it up. We'll 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 discuss this again further another time. I'm sure once his documentary starts production. And uh, you got anything? Got any spots tonight? No. No. No spots. Anything this week? No. no. Uh, <laughs> any shows this weekend? Yeah, I'm at um, <laughs> trying to get somewhere. I'm at Comedy Cove. Comedy Locked Cove. In Springfield. Nice. Friday, Saturday, 9 o'clock. Friday, Saturday, 9 o'clock. Go see Mike at the Comedy Cove in Springfield. I'll be Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club Wednesday, Thursday. Bridge Street Live in Connecticut Friday. And uh, f- a fundraiser for Fire People Saturday, but it's sold out. So can't go there. Huh. So that's that. Well, let's get together and hang this week. Grab some grub or some shit. All right, bro. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Please share uh, the podcast. People tell them to listen for us. Please uh, leave comments on iTunes. I uh, appreciate you guys listening each week. Uh, you've been listening to All in Our Heads. Mm-hmm.